so here we are in a leafy part of Leeds and you may get the impression that this is what life is like everywhere in Leeds but you'll be wrong as part of this project called Amplify Leeds we'll be doing a two-day filming uh, project going around Leeds uh, showing the contradictions in the lifestyles of people in the city particularly focusing on homelessness and we're going to meet Ifti who's going to go around meeting various people through the film no. Batman representing Man, everything boom Everybody else's life, life my life, life is already done. Life, life is no, no, you've got a good future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't. So, how long have you been on and off? On the streets, on and off. Um, over 12 years. 12 years? Yeah. Basically, all my relationships came to an end with family, girlfriends, yeah. a lot of my friends. Because I was sucked into what they wanted me to do. And if I didn't do it, I ended up. You end up homeless, or you end up back in prison. Sorry. Which, no, I'm alright, bro. I'm, nice. Which no one, no one wants to end up back in prison, so you do what you can do to stay out of prison. I oh, mean, well, I mean, helping. you know, you, you will get help out there, there's plenty of help. And you're talking help from um, legitimate sources. But a lot of your main help will come from people on the street. But how do you end up on the streets? Bad choices. Oh, not only bad choices. I mean, this time I was living in a house. I got into an argument with somebody. Boyfriend. They, <laughs> they decided to uh, take it too far. So they come out of my house with aggression. And so I napped them, which meant. I were on bail from police for section 18, which I've already had a few of them anyway. What's so section 18? So section 18 is quite a serious charge. It means wounding with intent. So basically, it's it's attacking someone with a weapon. You know what I mean? But for in my defence, all the charges were dropped after about three months. But during that three months, I was not allowed on the estate. Holbeck estate, so which meant I wasn't allowed in my house, right? Which meant I were homeless, right? So, for three months while I'm on this bail condition, I'm living, I'm living nowhere because I wasn't allowed in my house. I couldn't get correspondence from uh, the DWP, and so I ended up missing. Uh, an appointment for my door, which meant that I uh, stopped receiving benefits because I couldn't get in the house because the police said that I was guilty or as charged for a particular crime, which they stopped. They, they, they said, now you're not of that crime. But during that three month period, I lost my house, I lost all my benefits which made me homeless. Who during the day, when, when, what, what do, how do you spend your day? I, mean, I used to go to a place called Multiple Choice, a very good place, a um, stu structured day programme, but because of all cuts, that's stopping now. What, the, the that stopping stops that? at end of month. What, end of this month? Yeah, yeah. And what, three weeks? Yeah. Closing? Yeah, yeah. Because of the cuts? Because of cuts, yeah. So for all, all the drug addicts and freaks of society, you know, the, uh, the underclass. For anybody that wants to sort themselves out, a lot of the services are being cut. So How does that make you feel? Depressed. Well, I mean, elevated with fury. If I'm honest, I knew I used to be a service user red when I got out of rehab first time. I'm going to rehab. I, I just I became said, no, disillusioned. No, no. You, be, you do become disillusioned, you know, when you go back to engage in a particular service and that service says it's no longer available because, because there's not enough money. So what are you going to do? What can people do? I know what I'll do. What are you going to do? Do you want to share it? I'll find somewhere else. What, what about the other people? A lot of people crumble. A lot of people do crumble. 
I'm lucky where I'm quite a strong person. You are, man. Do you know what I mean? You are, you are. I'm not a dumbo. No. Where there's a few of them, they'll crumble. They'll start using again, they'll be back on the street again. It means they'll be thieving again. Feeding drug dealers' pockets again. Uh, just goes on, right? And that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what'll happen again. Sure. Show, us what you, show us what you carry. All oh, right, yeah. Sure. So what I carry about on, I a, just daily carry a, kind of yeah. on a daily basis. On a daily basis. On a daily basis. Hello, girls. I have something to read. Some papers. You know what I mean? Something to drink. Fuck you now. Got to have that. Something to eat. Sandwich spread. Got to have something to eat. Of course you have. Yeah. You're dying you know on the more, more, more of some some bog roll. You just wipe your ass yeah, and now again. Well prepared. Something to wash with. With that washing empty. machine. Well, I have to go see boys, don't I? I have to carry your washing machine around with you as well. And socks, you've it's got socks. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a fucking inconvenience. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I've got water and what, you know what I mean? Everything for syringes. Nice box. Everything I need to survive. Do you, yeah. and, and what about your friends and that? What, what, what sort of do you get up to on a, what do you do socially? I'm going to have fun. Well, I mean, it depends. You know, when you get into a life of, Bouncing about, then you forget that you're bouncing about. So you can do all. I don't necessarily look like someone that's on the street. No, no, no. You, you <laughs> know what, I mean? what do people look I like? I look quite respectable, okay. presentable. Okay. But that's the thing nowadays. You know, people what? are very conscious of looking like a fucking tramp. Well, where do you wash? Where do you? I mean, where can you go in town? I'll go wherever. But there's been times where I had to wash for fucking seven days, and I've, you know, I've. I've do you get any violence towards you? Any crime? Is it nah, because I look where I look. You look quite tough. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, you know. Who's helping you at the moment apart from this project? What's that project called again? Multiple choice. Multiple choice. Helping. Yeah. Who else? Who's I else? do go to LAU, but the crap. But what about people, what about they say that you get moved on through the town centre, police move you on? Yeah, you, of course they do, that's if you What begging. do they do? What do they do if you beg? So, you don't beg? If you smash it to, no, 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 I just do what I have to do, don't yeah, I? Fair enough. Don't get me wrong, I thought about it. I know for a fact I can go get my dog, who's a gorgeous, big, massive ass dog, man. And I can sit Love there, dogs, and I know for a fact, people will give me money if I'm sat there with my dog. I know that. But do the police move you on, what you're saying? Yeah, probably. of course they will. They'll move you on if you're having a fucking drink. So, how many That's why people? I like this area. Yeah, because how many homeless street. people is there? How many homeless people are around here? Elusive. Well, most of the homeless sleepers, right, they aren't that good at begging. No. Most of beggars have got Government somewhere to live. Style is right. abusive. They're ones with money. Right. They're ones that are not stupid. Yeah, yeah. All cunts that are on the street, they're all tramps. They're all mugs. Pickles. They're all people that are getting bullied. Yeah, right. bums. They're, they're cunts buggered. that get jogged on onto the canal. Uh, do they? Do I mean? people live on the canal? Of course they fucking do. Really? Yeah. Sometimes they fall in canal and die. What would you say? How can we change? How can we stop people being rough sleep? What, what do you, what, what do you well, suggest? We need more institutions. What do, you, yeah? what do you suggest we should do? We need more homes. Um, yeah, Just it's probably right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, Just more, give people more, somewhere more. to live. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what more, I'm saying? More housing. No. Yeah. What about ages? Is it different ages? No, I mean, you find nowadays most people on the street are a little bit older. A little bit older? Yeah. There's not many people my age. Don't see so many people my age. Um, but a lot of them still struggle. They're on it, what did they say, three meals away from homelessness, some shit like that. Right. And a lot of them are. So I think we should go to this project and we should go and show, show us where you go, man. Uh, you multiple you? choices. Oh, which way are we going? <laughs> going this way. <laughs> This is multiple choice. This building here? No, the one right at the end. Right, let's go there. That's the place where I go. All this was a homeless. Homeless, yeah, that were all the homeless kids. Young homeless kids. Children. Oh, well, homeless Young kids. kids. Young children, basically. Close down. Kids. Close down. Well, look at it. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Look at all this. Yeah. 
you're getting rid of all trams, all kids, all roads, all drug addicts, all whatever, all, all, all scummer society, getting rid of them. So we can rebuild all that and yeah, make it all posh. Oh, this has been an amazing shot. This is a homeless centre. Yeah, that's getting closed that's down. That's the homeless centre. This is the drug place. Yeah, and then so the, that was the homeless centre. This but look what they're building place. opposite, John Lewis and the new centre. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. But they're closed. Got a buzz on, buzz around the front. Oh, let's go. This used to be open. This door. We used to be able to sit out here, isn't it? But it's all going. This is not pulled, it's getting shut down in the uh, end of this month. This is on top. That man's doing it. Hang on, hang on. Right, so you were saying that you've been homeless for 18 months. That's right. You've been waiting for the home, so how did you... Are you alright? I mean, it's how you got to that stage. Yeah, um, I was an alcoholic. Uh, almost for 18 months. Ended up with uh, exits. Um, sober surfing. Um, went to the detox rehab, got myself sorted. And now I'm not homeless. Uh, went to the different groups for support and recovery. And I'm not back. So, so, you, so you're saying that a lot of these groups have that, that basically helped you to get back? Uh, they did uh, for me alcoholism, yeah. And, and what other support have you had? I had support from uh, St Anne's Alcohol Resource Services, uh, different uh, projects in the community, LTLA. LTLA, which is St Anne's, again, St Anne's, St Anne's, St Anne's, St Recovery, Smart Recovery, St George's Crips, St George's Crips. I had a lot of support from them. This guy's pretty smart. Yeah, Look, he's I got am. better jeans than me. Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. Where do you stay? Where do you live? Where do uh, you sleep? I don't Railways, uh, everywhere. Everywhere? Wherever I can. But where's your bedding? <laughs> Is it, have you hit bedding there? Uh, just, I just stop over. Oh, no, sorry. Pardon me. When we're being front off, right? Oh, uh, what? A nun? This nun helps you? Yeah, a nun helps. What do you mean? The socks, man. Silly ball back. No. <laughs> it's not going to be black, man. Did you hear that? I didn't hear that. that. Yeah. It's not going to be silly. Yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Tried to get help. How can I help? You know, going to like support places. I've just been to. They don't help me. Why not? If they're not going to help me, I can't help me. We tried. 
What did that guy say? You've, they've got to want to help themselves, didn't it? Can't buy, I, I think he said, I love you. you. It's the only bit that's staying open. Yeah. yeah. But up here, this is where it comes to. <laughs> so this is Doctor's Street. You're on street. Well, you just get out of prison. Or you're homeless. What not? This is where you come from. So there are places people can go? Then got Doctor's Yeah, yeah, of course there is. In fact, sometimes better than where you could go normally. Yeah, no. Good doctor. Yeah. Have you been? Yeah. Because they're used to dealing with people with certain issues. So they're probably specialists, aren't they? Yeah, a lot of them. Or even GPs that work here are used to dealing with people with certain issues. Homelessness, porn, drug addiction. Uh, a lot of times there's been uh, abuse, whether it be physical, sexual, mental. You know, a lot of people that come here have not had an easy life. Usually that's why they're homeless. So, hopefully, um, that guy's going to be in. So, so we'll go to the Cardigan Centre first, and then after that we'll go to St Anne's. And then once we've gone there, we should be able to uh, go back to the He's just got a But just very briefly, my name is Jamie Ross. I'm the operations manager for Simon on the Streets. We're a West Yorkshire based charity who give support to homeless and rootless people and people who can't engage with mainstream services. Uh, so yeah, that's what we, do. we are a charity. What, yes. What, what sort of things do you do on a day-to-day -day level? We do. We give practical and emotional support to people who can or won't engage with mainstream services. So we build um, intensive, trusting relationships, supportive relationships with people, and try to get them to understand themselves enough to uh, to make some positive change in their life. Really. You go out to meet them rather than they come to you. Perhaps. Yeah, we have no services. We have no um, office based place at all. This is this doesn't exist. Yeah. So it's just one to one it's support. All, it's one to one Thank straight you. outreach based support. Yeah. Thank is you that so okay? Much. And it's a charity where can they find out about you if they Oh yeah uh, www.simonstreets.co.uk and they can give, they can support you can you can support you can give you can volunteer um, get involved. Thank you. Brilliant <laughs> welcome We have 60 people, 60 to 100 people daily and over the course of a year we have around I'd say close to a thousand unique people coming and using the service. Um, when, when a, how, how would somebody who was on the streets for example be able to engage with the service? How do you find, do people get referred to you or? So, there's, there are lots of different agencies in Leeds that work with homeless people. So there are street outreach programs which go out onto the streets to engage with homeless people on the streets. They work directly with us to, to bring people into our services. Then we also work with the council. So we work with the council to try and provide housing, to get people, to give people the right advice to get into housing. So I suppose from the streets, there are street outreach programmes, they would signpost to us and then the, the, the journey there on continues depending on people's willingness to engage. What is the process once a, a service user comes here? Are there, is there a set structure of things you do to try and help them get back into So, <clears throat> when someone, say someone turns up on our doorstep, what we would say is that they have to go to housing, 
and talk to housing because there is a process obviously so the so housing benefits the housing office in Leeds will take them in have an interview with them see if they qualify and basically that means you have to have been residents in the city or area that you are trying to claim benefits in to qualify for benefits in that area. You need to be resident in that area for a certain amount of time, and I think that's six months. Or you need to have ties to that area, um, so you need to have family in that area. And if you qualify for that, then they'll send you to us, and then we'll start the process of engagement from then. And if you don't qualify for that, then they'll do everything within their power to to, to get you to a place where you do qualify and if there are any other reasons why you can't go back to where you came from so if there's a history of abuse if there's if there are, if there are problems related to that then obviously the council us all other agencies will try and work with the individual and so then on the process of engagement when someone comes to us we on the very lowest level we have food and we have shelter but then we run training and engagement programs to try and well basically build up skills so they run from different from confidence building skills so things like art group opera we have, an op we have a partnership with opera north we have a partnership when, with the thing called urban sprawl which is a, a, a homeless theater group um, and so we have all sorts of different engagement activities to sort of soft skill provision to build up skills. We run other things with different with other agencies and we can send people off to different agencies. Um, we also have a catering facility and people can work their way through that and we can put people on NVQs and all these kinds of things. And it's generally if we've got people, we might as well do our best to train them up. We might as well do our best to, to, to get them onto them some kind of level pegging where they can then go out into the real world and, and hopefully get a job, find employment. Daily basis or when you're out there helping, what does that involve? Um, so I work with a couple of volunteers, yeah. an amazing team, so they go out on our both on the Tuesday and a Saturday okay. and there's the first point of contact which is trying to get to know someone so the building can just mean saying hello and learning about them and that's just another part of trying to get people out from the streets to the hostels okay. that means contacting the hostels and being uh, facilitating the conversation between the hostels and the homeless person okay. so you're in, in a, are, you, are you plugging in is there a gap there in terms of service provision um, you've got organizations like St George's Crypt and then you've got the council. What what gap are you plugging? There's clearly a gap there. Isn't I mean, there is a gap in yeah. terms of that. There are those who are outside hostels yeah. because of legislation or housing regulations, particularly migrants from Eastern Europe who mm -hmm. might not apply to. So trying to reach them, those who are out in the street, because they don't have access to any hostel, and also the councils don't have any statutory duty towards um, providing housing for them in some cases. So mm -hmm. there's a gap in that regard. So the gap of people who are just outside um, on the street. When yeah. we began five years ago, for me it was about learning how to sit down with a cup of tea and listen to someone. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a deep need to listen to people's um, stories, but also to ensure that housing provision um, is also structured in a way that allows people to receive a place. So Ifti, good to see you again. So you, you've been filming in Leeds as part of this Amplify Leeds. What, what have you learned? Well, we've met a variety of people and um, a lot of the rough sleepers are really happy with the services they are given. The service providers that we met, the people are so beautiful, so helpful. There's a lot of really, really amazing people out there um, that are really making a difference. So are their voices being amplified, is it way? Well, some of this, we've just found out that within in three weeks' time, a lot of the services are going to be amalgamated into this forward leads. Now, even looking at this poster, it doesn't really uh, look very welcoming. So a lot of the services that are working now at the moment, um, 
they're going to be changed and staff staff don't know where they're going to be in three weeks time which building they're going to be with and who is working so i'm not sure that the you know a, a proper consultation process has gone ahead so what are the people themselves saying in the streets i mean there's one narrative which says well these people are lazy can't they just go and get a job um and of course another which says well these cuts are affecting everyone um, what's your sense well um, these people have, have found themselves in situations due to lack of emotional support and addiction to, to drugs and they need so, a lot of real, they, they need so much um, emotional support and help um, and, and it's, a, it's at a time where, the, you know, this is a time of their lives where they really do need it. Um, but services, again, are being cut and I'm not sure whether that's, well, that's definitely not going to improve the situation. Well, thank you very much uh, for taking time to talk to us. Thank you.